whenever I see a video like that, all I ever want to do is just start pounding my chest. I'm going to see if I can get Demo to do it in just a minute. He's not going to like that. No, you won't. I'll, yeah, I'll we'll tell see. you that for we'll free. See. We'll see how we get on. Welcome back to the European Challenge League Playoffs 2021. My name's Ian Chambers. We are back on the desk with Anne and Demo, and we can now get into the meat and bones of our upper bracket quarterfinal. Our first one, Helios Gaming versus Hellraisers. Demo, I'm going to come to, to you first. Let's just discuss this Helios side, because in theory, on paper, right, Hellraisers yeah. take this every day of the of week. Course. Yeah. However, Helios in the group stages maybe changed a lot of opinions on how this might go down. Yeah, they, they swung a, fruit, uh, a, a few heads, I would definitely say, uh, including my own. I think Helios as a team going into that group, did anyone really expect them to do as well as they did? Probably not. And they managed to top their group. I think a lot of people were looking at 86, thinking, oh, oh 86, they're going to have the easiest run they're ever going to get. And Helios just changed the entire dynamic of how that group kind of played out. And it was because of their unusual play style. It was against the grain. It was far as way as traditional siege that I can think of. Uh, you know, you are, you are you suggesting they're trolling or what? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> You cross that line, I think you're putting yourself in some hot water in, but, okay. you know, I, I'm not not disagreeing with you, okay. put it that way. Um, but obviously the no-band defenders and the Osa band that you mm -hmm. mentioned, Dan, it, it was very, very strange, very weird. If they're playing the long ball, if they're trying to say, oh, we were hiding a stretch for the group stages, I mean, you must have some confidence to actually hide uh, for the group stages whenever you could be eliminated in the group stages as well. It's not as if they're guaranteed to playoffs. They had to get there, first of all. And and they played, yeah, they, they definitely played the long ball. And I, I just want to see how they play because I, I don't know. And I don't think anyone knows. Yeah, and do you think that unpredictability makes them a bit of a formidable team to come up against? Yeah, it might definitely be. Because if you look at what they played in the group phase, they played on uh, Bank, they played on Oregon and Clubhouse. Three different maps that you have to prepare for, as well if you're in the if you're Hellraising, you have to prepare for this game. And the fact that they banned Osa, an operator that you can't even play yet, and they did not ban any defensive operators. So they feel comfortable playing a lot of different operators. We see a Frost, we see a Rook. Um, it's definitely going to be interesting to prepare against a team like that. Is this the style of play when it comes to Siege that you enjoy, Demo, or is it something that you don't really, you know, does it not tickle your fancy? Yes and no. I mean, Ollie knows full well whenever I see Siege that isn't necessarily what uh, I'm used to seeing, mm. maybe I kind of go off the rails. Which you're a bit is, of a traditionalist, aren't I you? Am, I, I, I am. would say there's, you're a traditionalist. There's a certain way. I think growing up in EU as, as well in the early days, you know, EU was... You know the, the the staple. It was the the spearhead for how siege was being played. You think obviously back to G2 and Penta days. That was what siege was. That was the standard. And and I think for a lot of people that's kind of stuck the way it is. But then we've obviously seen the rise of Latam, which has really changed things. I think NA has came leaps and bounds. And and I think now with with EU, I think teams are also starting to take things from other regions and not just the same old. Oh, it's EU. This is what they're going to do. We're now seeing different EU teams have a different kind of style. Mm. I like that you're a traditionalist anyway. It's what makes you demo. Uh, when you look at Hellraisers, you mentioned that are they going to be able to adapt to their style of play? What do you think they're they're going to be able to do to deal with that level of unpredictability. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what they will do indeed. Uh, looking at the roster, like we said, there are players that have more experience, so they definitely know how to play against teams that might pull out different cards during their games. Mm -hmm. um, their group phase was also kind of strong. They had two wins, one being an overtime win, and their only loss was against Makers. So if you're going to lose against any team, I think it's definitely okay to lose against a team like Makers. Um, yeah, I think it's a strong performance in a group phase, and I definitely am looking forward to see what they'll do in the playoffs. When you look at Smash by Ash, you got Flares, you got Exodus, you got Rush. They were all in CL yeah. last season, but this time they have that pro league experience mm -hmm. in the form of a mission on the roster. Yeah, they do a mission. Very known Russian player, obviously had his time with, with VP, and uh, we've seen what he's able to do with that roster. And uh, and I think for for this side, it almost feels as if he was the missing piece from last season. You know, we, we knew that that win strike team from last season, they had the potential to cause upsets. And I think they did some of that inside of the group stages last year, but maybe not uh, into the playoffs losing to Kiwana. And, and I think now this team, it looks a lot stronger. I think it looks more structured than uh, maybe what it was last year. So, yeah, I think the improvement has been shown uh, dramatically by Hellraisers, and that's why I think a lot of a lot of teams are really fancying to to maybe win this entire competition. Ooh, is that what you think as well? Do you think this this that Ooh. could happen? Is that where this is going? I'm gonna be very honest and think that there are other teams that are more favored to win entirely, but I definitely think they can come far. Okay, they didn't get too far in CL last year, as you mentioned there, so they'll be hoping to to change that this time around. When it comes to how they deal with Helios, I just want to take a step back to that just a moment, Demo. Do you think that they have to play basic Siege? Is that what will do it? 
I, I want to say I want to say yeah. I, I think if you take it slow, a team like Helios where they're very unpredictable. I think 86 fell victim to that. Uh, during their, their first game in the group stage. I think there was a bit of mentality where you're playing against a team and maybe you end up, okay, let's say for example, 86, they were losing to a team that was no banning operators and no banning OSA. And then, you know, the mental game starts uh, acting up and you're thinking, how are we losing to a team <laughs> who is banning these operators that it means nothing and yet we're losing? They played a very unorthodox playstyle. I think it caught everyone by surprise. But I think a team like Hellraisers, they'll be ready for it today. And I think if Hellraisers go and play their siege, don't worry about Helios. They should be able to, to nail this one. But then on the other side of that coin, Helios, they shocked the world during the group stages. And they're going to be hungry to shock the world again here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you said, on Orthodox, like we did see the Frost as well, for example, behind the couch in, in Bank, where one of the players of Hyperio fell for it. That's definitely going to break your mental as well. Um, looking at the lineup or the operators that Hellraisers tend to play, it's kind of normal. I think if you throw it back a year, people would be like, Finca. Finca? Why do we see Finca in a Challenger League or EUL? But it's becoming a like more normal occurrence to play Finca at these like uh, stages in time. So, I mean, standard siege could probably be yes. You agree? Yeah, I, I think you know the Finca point was a great one made. It's an operator who has seen massive uh, increases in playstyle across every region. I think with the the changes that happened to her kit, where she gets the gone six, she gets the two nades, plays almost like a secondary Iana. We've seen Iana be a target of bans from other teams. So yeah, I think Finca is a very strong operator in the mess, and one will definitely see. I think throughout the course of the the two weeks, we know because of the format of this tournament, it's it's obviously very important to get on you know, a strong foot and really make a good start here. Because as you said earlier on, if you've just joined us, if you do lose this, you do drop into that lower bracket. And you've got to imagine Helios with the run they've been on, if they do take a loss here and drop down, could, could you see them having the right mentality to bounce back? I mean, obviously a loss is not nice to get, but you need to deal with it eventually as a team. Um, so it could be a way back up for them, like obviously not in the upper bracket, but they could face some teams that they could potentially win from. Um, if we look at the operators just a little bit back, we saw the Finca, but Helios tends to bend the Finca as well. So that could be a good counter that we can uh, can see towards Hellraisers. Mm. Well, where are we going to see this best of three unfold? Let's get into map vetoes. Demo, I want you to talk us through what you're seeing on the screen right now. Okay. Um, okay. Fairly, I want to say standard in terms of what Helios wanted, which would have been that bank. It was a strong map for them in the group stages. I think they'll be looking to get up to the old tricks again, Ian, that they managed to pull over the, the, the eyes of, of Team 86. So, yeah, I think bank probably expected. The fact that Hellraisers have left that open, it tells me that they're ready. I think it tells them that whatever they throw at them, they're going to be prepared for it. Uh, Villa as well, coming in for Hellraisers. I think a very good map for them. I think it suits their playstyle very well. I think Villa has really changed over the course of uh, the past two seasons where we've kind of went away from the more structured Villa where you're bringing hard breach. We've went more for uh, almost like a coastline type play where, where we've seen teams not running hard breach. We're seeing teams take a lot more nades. I think the vertical action has came in. Uh, you know, it's bigger and better than ever for Villa. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a good map for Hellraisers. We get to Oregon. It's always the 50-50 map. And every team can play it no matter what tier you are. Everyone knows Oregon. Oregon, and that's just going to be a scrap. What do you reckon, Ad? Yeah, I think it's interesting that they left Bank open, Hellraisers being then. It's a map that they banned quite often in the group phase. They banned it three times. Um, and seeing as a performance from Helios before, they had a win on Bank and a very, very strong defense. Won five of those defensive rounds to uh, to get there. And then we'll talk about Oregon. It seems like Helios has a really strong attack there. We know that Oregon's one of the most defender favorite maps um, due to the statistics of previous games. But they had a really strong attack there, winning five of their attacking rounds. Is it time for some predictions, do you think? For our first quarter final? I don't want to do predictions. <laughs> I think you should do predictions. I don't want to do that. Well, I think we're going to do predictions all the way through this month. So you better get ready for it. <sighs> do I have to? Yeah, you do have to. I don't want to. Are we going to see... <laughs> Are you going to be like this all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to see Oregon? Depending... <laughs> Well, the thing is, it's all about the bank. The bank game for me. I think Villa, in my eyes, that's locked. Mm -hmm. Hellraisers, that's theirs. Yep. It all comes down to the bank game. Are Hellraisers prepared for this? Are they ready for what Helios did to 86? Are they going to fall victim of the same trap? Are they going to get caught out by the same stuff that, you know, rookies even know? It's, it's that kind of mentality. I think the fact that Hellraisers left it open, I think they're ready. Mm -hmm. I think they'll come in and they'll take this comfortably. 2-0? Yeah. Wow. What do you think, Anne? Oh, I think it's... A, it's um, I'm not so sure. It's it's interesting that Hellraiser's been the, ban the, the map bank so often. Uh, they might be having some strats on there. So, like you said, it might be an easy one for them in the in the books. Um, 
I, I don't know. You don't I, like predictions either. No, this is I hard always, for me. Like the thing is, if you make a prediction right and then you get it right, you're you're a legend. You're you're amazing. And yeah, if yeah. You get the prediction wrong, you're some kind of weirdo. Well, it's religion. worth it to potentially be a legend, though. Here we go. Yeah, true. I, I might throw in a spicy thing and say that Helios might be potentially scoring well on this, seeing okay. as they were really strong on bank before. Interesting. So th that's what you're saying. Second first map. Could be because they were very strong on bank before. Okay. So. We'll be getting into the game shortly, but before we do, one of the things I wanted to touch on with you, Demo, in the pre-show, but we didn't get time to, was just how the meta's changed coming into CL. Yeah, meta at the moment has definitely been a bit of br uh, breath of fresh air, I think, with the changes to Hardbridge Gadgets, which hopefully we will uh, get to see a lot of that today. We're seeing certain operators who got the, uh, the, the gadget, what, two years ago, year and a half ago, whatever it was, you're looking at Monty, Capitao, uh, Ying, for example, all got this uh, form off of actual hard breach. And now they went for a buff where each of those operators get two of them. Mm -hmm. And what this kind of means is you could bring two operators that have a hard breach gadget, let's say, for example, maybe Zero, let's say Buck, you know, operators that have utility along with the hard breach gadget, we might see hard breachers not even be selected. If I look at a map like Bank, if you're attacking the basement, for example, all teams need to do is get open the hatches. You can do that with hard breach gadgets. So we might actually see a transition phase where the hard breach gadgets become the new Habana. Mm, is that what we're going to see? It could be. If you look at an operator like Buck, for example, it's great for vertical work. And now the fact that he's got two of these hard breach gadgets, he can easily open up the hatches. Well, Bank is the first map that we're going to see. Could potentially be brought quite often to open up hatches to get the verticality done. Like you said, uh, Bank could be a map for verticality. A lot of um, long lines that we've seen so far. Long lines of sight I'm, uh, I'm talking about. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see him having two of these hard breaching gadgets now. Now, if you haven't had enough of Demo's wonderful voice just yet, he is going to be casting our first series. So how's your cardio? Because in between maps, you're going to be coming back and forth to the desk. I know you've been working out. I know you've been sculpting the guns a lot recently. Are you feeling like this is something you're up to doing? It's only just over there. It's not what, what cardio I'll be. I'm not sprinting. Oh, you, you might time do. how fast you do it. Not sprinting. Yeah, I think we should time how yeah. fast he does it. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Yeah. See if you can set a record, you know. So am I going to go now? Should we go? Leave? Are we ready for you to go? Yeah, let's go. You, okay. you take those headphones off. Okay. And we're gonna, we, I'm going to commentate on it as you make your way across. So the Nor Northern Irish man takes off his headset, grabs his iPad. And do you want to jump in? Should we? Should we yes, okay. exactly. Goes to get to the casting chair, obviously. The there chair is turned around. So he's going to have to perform a 360 no scope in order to get onto the chair. <laughs> to pull the headset on. There we go. I think like, looks he's like here. he's all said and done. Wow. Welcome. Look never who he's with. Can I do the big intro for you? Because I really wanted Hit to. Me with it. I've been calling you the Eiffel Tower <laughs> of Siege Casters because you're so big. <laughs> and it is time now for our first upper bracket quarterfinal. Over to X and Demo. Ian, thank you very much indeed. I am delighted to be here. Have you caught your breath back yet? What breath? I'm joking. It's a bad joke carried on for me, and I really am joking. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to be hitting the ground running here tonight. We have got some storming fixtures ahead of ourselves. Helios Gaming versus Hellraisers, upper bracket quarterfinal number one. This is where the journey to EUL starts for one of these teams. It might not be one of these teams, but it's one of the teams that's involved in this playoffs. One of the teams this week will win this competition. That's a, that's that, a good way that's to win it. That's my prediction, and I think I might be right about that one. You know what I also, I also think? What? I think one of the teams that we're going to see tonight is going to be at least in that top two. Ooh. I think we've got some really, really good games ahead of ourselves. We're not going to waste any time. We are going to jump right into things here. We're going to be kicking off with Bank. Now, it was brought up on the desk. Obviously, a new patch came out mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. I am excited already to get to cast a little bit of Siege on this new patch. I haven't touched it yet. The Hard Breach Gadget, it is a big deal. And it's, especially yeah. on a map like Bank. Now we've opened up here with a Hibana ban. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Oh, Demo, no, it's happening again. Oh. I didn't get this script. <laughs> Mine I, says something I knew different. It. It's a conspiracy. I'm telling you, if it's no ban, I'm already wanting the walk. I'm, I'm, I want to go. So, yep. we were chatting yep. about this last yep. night. Ugh. We were talking about this last night in the lobby, and we were saying that there's a very good chance that they have just sandbagged strats mm -hmm. up until this moment. The NIP, we call it. And it was the, it was the air quotes, the NIP. For anyone that's not familiar, that's pretty much exactly what they've just done recently. And we were expecting to see a serious 
game today. Mm -hmm. A serious, and, and that's not to say we're not going to see a serious game. But we were at least expecting to see bans, not just let's leave everything wide open. Yeah. I, I don't know what you say about Helios. I, I don't know where you go. They've done it again. This is now in a best of three. This is where you expect to see your team play some of the best siege you know you'll ever play. But they went for the same thing again. I just. I mean, is it mental warfare? Is that the, the kind of topic we get into? Because now Hellraisers, imagine if they start losing and they're looking at, they banned OSA and they didn't ban an operator and we're losing to them. You think of the mental toll that takes. It's a confidence thing. It is without doubt a confidence thing. Helios coming in here and saying, look, we do not care mm -hmm. what the bans are. You can't counterban us and we're not even going to attempt to try and counterban you. Because even even still, if they're not going to run air quote meta bands, mm -hmm. at least run a couple of targets here and there. If it, if the game allows you to, if if you can actually get away with that, but to just not see any at all, crazy stuff, crazy stuff indeed. We are going to be kicking off here though now. Hellraisers starting off on the defense, arguably the most favored side here for Bank. Yeah, defense. We see a lot of kind of five one start to to roll in. I think basement is notorious for being a very heavy defender sided uh, bomb site, especially whenever an operator like Kaid is open. Only I mean that can make potential Kaid trick can happen. But then again, you could argue Thatcher's open, so maybe that doesn't matter as much. But then I mean you look at Helios, not a Thatcher in play, which was a big risk. Let's let's be honest, and and also no Kaid from Hellraisers is another big risk. But then again, we are looking at now your open area where maybe the hatches aren't a necessity. So one change as well I would like to remind everyone that actually happened is on bike and that is uh, concerning the open area. Mm. The the slats in the flooring, if you go up in towards uh, the stockroom, it's now at a different angle. So you can get a lot more clean angles onto anyone holding open area. So there's a couple of changes there and uh, we'll see how it's going to be executed and see if it's uh, going to help out. Because a good rule of thumb used to be that the, the joists in the floor would, would run east-west mm. or west-east. But that's now slowly starting to change as and where required. And it was a, a bit of a big change that was uh, quite popular on Twitter a couple of days ago. And it really relates directly to this bomb site. Now, we're going to be seeing an opening here. Straight on in. On to Banana. Already looking to aggressively clear this top floor. Robbie going to kick it off with a second before two back in response here by Hellraisers. It's a very quick take, and I don't think that Purple's seen the guy, but yes, he does. Takes down a mission. They're flooding the side demo. We've barely seen a minute. It's been a minute, and they're already in, but then again, they don't have Diffuser, and I think Hellraisers have called that out, that the Diffuser is not there. There is a constant Maestro Cam feeding out information, but nobody from Hellraisers can actually capitalize on that information. Smash, he's looking to see if he sees ahead. There's what? a man right there on your screen, and Smash will find him. Exodus finds Purple, and it's all down to Nitro. He has picked up the Diffuser, Ollie, but at what cost? Going to try and now push his way in, gets called out on the Bulletproof. There's a live ping available as well. Crossfire surely being established here. He's going to have to aggressively push on in. He's got an eternity of time to work with here. He's going to get pushed by Smash. Playing ring around the rosy here. Needs to find one, needs to hit the turn and burn. But the double door push from Exodus will be successful. A scrappy first round demo. That could be a sign of a very exciting best of three on our hands. It could be a sign of an exciting one, or it could be a very quick one with how Helios are playing. All what they went for is, you know, ris risky, very, very risky to simply just try and walk into the bomb site without clearing literally anything. He, I mean, how do you put that into words? I mean, to be fair, all credit to them. They got the two opening picks. Maybe that was the call. Maybe Let's that was the get call. the two opening picks. Let's just play off it and flood site and play off the man count. But there was no information. We, we've seen what, what the Ronies can do. You know, what a strong defender gun, even though it has been nerfed. Doesn't doesn't really show up there, does it? No, not at all. I mean, we, we barely got past talking about changes mm -hmm. and, 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 and opening kills started to come on through and it was just bam, 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 straight off the rip. Now the team looking to take this slow and steady. I think Hellraiser's really put into a position where they had to react quickly and they did so very well. They were able to get those two kills back very quickly. Sure, they lost the opener, but after that, it was a level 3-3 three, three. and all of a sudden they then start to rally in the light, right? These guys are just pushing the site. We just need to play our angles. Great trade in at the end, really valuable. That could have gone badly. Very easily, that could have gone quite badly. So it was a, a well salvaged round, I think, from Hellraiser's and that's the kind of pressure that they're going to be put under all night long. Helios are going to bring that heat 
throughout these games. And Hellraiser's are going to have to stack up against it and uh, keep the mental in check. Now, we are going to be switching sites. We're going downstairs. You wouldn't think it, but we are. You maybe wouldn't think it. The castle pick is... Uh, Another change. Four castle barricades now instead of three. Quite an extension. Eight hits, I believe, as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. As opposed to 11. Yeah, this is um, an interesting setup from Hellraiser's. For a basement, you probably wouldn't expect that, especially whenever you've got operators like Kaid on the board, who we know can be great for denying access to hatches. But they are, in fact, going to try and hold the mid floor away from Helios. Helios are looking for a hot drop. They've just dropped into Vault once again. Only they've just tried to hit the site immediately, up, but they've been shredding a mission. Will catch on, finds the first kill. Purple, and in their smash out of nowhere, swings and finds two of them. Robin has somehow just walked in the server, even though there's a mirror window looking at him. He doesn't care. But still, it has not worked again for Helios. They've tried the risk, and it has backfired once again. These boys are playing like they've got somewhere to be. Three versus two. Again, we've only just seen a minute. We're now going to look at a bit of an engagement that could be happening here inside of Open. Exodus. And they have a chance at Robin here. I'm not sure if Robin has any information. There was a little bit of drone work going on earlier, but with so many dead on the side of the attackers, it's going to be very difficult now to really gather in this remaining half of the round. Exodus, he's got a good idea of where smash. he needs to try and push through, but Smash, he's also rotated on out. He's going to take down the Zephyr, take down Robin, and leave a lot to do for a solo pushing Dokubi in the garage. Rush, at the bottom of those main stairs, could have a little bit of information there. There is a bulletproof in place somewhere, but honestly, we've barely seen any of the site, so I'm not entirely sure where it is. All that needs to happen now, Hellraisers, just try and hold these angles. That DMR is not an ideal weapon, and... It shows the Vector reigns supreme in the close quarters. Hellraisers pick up their second round here demo. And again, off the back of an unorthodox push. That's a rank style push if ever I've seen it. You drop that hatch into Gold Vault and usually you can make something happen. This isn't rank. This is a different level entirely. We need to see something a little bit deeper than that. And this is what we kind of expected from Hellraisers is they're going to play I mean, I say basic. The setup they did wasn't necessarily basic. But then again, if you look at kind of what options that gave them, if you're holding that mid floor and you're opening up hatches, it gives you, you know, the viable option only to obviously have a bit of freedom. You can roam, which is going to be great for bank. We know how big it is and, and the different staircases you can have. But leaving those hatches open, if things like that do happen, you can call everyone back in a moment's notice. They're back on site, and you can take those gunfights against those guys dropping in the vault. Not as if it was needed, because the players on site were able to do enough, but you could see that they were ready for it if it did come in. Hellraisers are ready for this type of playstyle. They are ready for it, and this is what I kind of feared for Helios. If Hellraisers are ready, it's not going to work for them the same way it worked against 86. It's credit to Hellraisers at this point. They set extended castle barricades up in that first floor. There were guys out there on the roam. We saw drones pinging people inside of tellers really early on into the round. So the information was there for Helios. They knew there were a couple of people off site and they chose to push directly. But Hellraiser did a really good job of rallying. And as the rounds go on, and if these rushes are continually attempted, Hellraiser is going to wise up to that and they're going to go, we don't need to extend. We don't need to get ourselves out there. There's no point in putting ourselves in harm's way if all these boys are going to do is rush. And at that point, if Helios starts to take a bit of a back seat and they start to go, right, we need to try and clear this a little bit more methodically, then it could work out for them. So moving on to the third bomb site for Hellraisers. Not looking to go for the uh, the top floor, which is a bit of a surprise. Usually that's uh, kind of the third pick bomb site that we expect to see. But instead, they've went for the Teller's Archives. Again, going with this kind of extension in towards open area, utilizing the castle once again. I mean, castle already, we're, we're seeing how the castle barricades can be used to block off uh, a lot of entrances. They've actually barricaded off the window and also the door in towards archives. So that kind of nullifies any potential maybe construction rush up the server stairs and then into uh, server potentially. That could have been an option for Helios. They will, however, take a much more slower pace, though. I think uh, the idea that they had in the first two rounds isn't working for them. They certainly slowed down a lot more. And they will begin the destruction of upstairs. So usually this is, you know, a good position for attackers to be in, but because of the extension that Hellraisers have went for, they're in no danger at all. They've all kind of flooded out towards open area, which is uh, a kind of place that you can't get 
any real good vertical action because that hatch is now removed from the top floor, so open area is, is pretty safe. You can see purple starting to move in and open up those vertical angles, trying to find somebody, but nobody in a position to be given away from Hellraisers. And now it's down to Helios to see how they want to take these open area. Like, this is what it comes down to. They have to eliminate that side of the map. If they try and go for a plant, they'll get shut down by, you know, the holes that are made inside of the walls, and they can play the long angles from the stairs. And yeah, let's just see how they try and adapt to this open area hold. It's good to see a bit more of a considered push coming out here. Helios being given an opportunity to actually set themselves up because they're not just throwing themselves into the site. Still, a lot of information available here for Hellraisers. So we can see live pings coming through. The wall has been opened into Tellus. But there could be a push on the cards. Robin, he's going to kick things off. Takes out emission. Can now look to try and move on through. And the plant is going to be attempted, but it's immediately shut down. That's a diffuser cold on the ground here. Hellraiser's doing a great job once again, holding on to these angles. Purple and Nitro need to look to try and recover this diffuser, but they may not be even given the opportunity. Exodus gets taken down on the flank. Going for a little bit of aggression there and just caught short. Rush going to be holding the angle as well. Looking to find it through, but can't peek through the holes. He's going to have to try and make one a little bit bigger, and it will eventually pay dividends for him. Just suffering there to the angles available through those punch holes, but a bit more of an explosion hole. I think a super shorty hole was what was required there in the end. Hellraiser's chaining rounds together here, three for three. Yeah, uh, much more structured from Helios. You could see their idea was to use a vertical action and try and simply plant behind the desk, which is a bit of a, a blind spot. But the issue was is that the vertical holes that were made, they weren't held. You look at where Rush was. How is he allowed to play in that position? Above him is open. Why is he not dead? They didn't bring the book. They've run the book every single round, apart from round three. They're looking to run it here, unless a six-pick occurs. They didn't bring the book. I don't think they were anticipating the bombsite demo. I do not think that they were anticipating attacking into Archive and Tellers there because they've been religious on running that book. And all of a sudden, when they need it most, they're relying on breaching charges. Bit of a change moving into this round as well is that the Dokubi is no longer being brought. I'll be honest, I don't think, I've not even heard a Logic Bomb phone call go off at this point. There may have been. Not in the first two rounds, definitely. There may have been, but I haven't heard it, and it, we certainly haven't seen it do all too much. So that makes a lot of sense. Bring a little bit more destruction, bring a couple of nades. The nade play has been extremely light so far as well. And I think that that's something that Hellraiser is uh, taking quite a lot of advantage of at the minute. We're not seeing them bring a, a Jaeger. We're not really seeing them bring a Whamai. They're not worried about projectiles. They're not worried about getting naded out. I mean, to be fair, you, you know, you said Jaeger, Whamai, which are the two... They've got the Aruni. You They've have an Aruni, Aruni, which is a form. And even the castle as yeah. well. You know, if you True. barricade off a castle barricade, first of all, you can't nade through it. And then if you want to get rid of it, you're going to have to use a nade, which would then, you'd hopefully think, would save somebody's life in that instance. So, you know, they, they have things covered. I think the information has been pretty crucial from Hellraiser. Yeah. Also, we've seen the Maestro be brought constantly. And you can see the, the devastation that that guy has. And I think it works very, very well, considering the playstyle that Helios went into this game with, which was that quick, that aggressive uh, nature. And sure, it happens. If you get rushed and you die, it happens to the best of us. But then you can hop on those Maestro cameras and still be useful to your side. Regularly bringing a couple of Bulletproofs as well. And this is the second round we've not seen them use both Bulletproofs. So Mission does still have one in pocket. But I guess it's there if required. Reloading. Again, a slower push coming out of Helios here. Considering their speed in the first couple of rounds. First kill, Exodus, successful. The Roni nerf demo. Did it really happen? Is it actually a thing? Because that uh, thing still shreds. Like it. Does not look like it at all. What a, what a great pick. Again, it looks as if Nit Nitro was up to his old tricks, trying to slip in towards Lobby, which is exactly uh, the way he came in last time. And he did manage to get, get a kill from it. And you can see that Hellraisers, they were prepared for it. They're not going to let him get away with it twice. Rush is under uh, quite a lot of pressure. You can see them using a heap load of utility. The skeleton key, the breaching charges, opening up that Tellers and Archive side of the map. But then keep in mind, this is an open area bomb site, but... Maybe they're looking to try and push across and utilize that triple wall that leads in towards the small office. And that does open up the site entirely for the attackers. But with a man down, it does make things pretty difficult. I am worried where Brian is because he has the diffuser by himself. And I know last round the Helios, they struggled whenever the diffuser was cold and they had to send somebody around to go and pick it up. And it just didn't give them the site pressure, the map pressure that they needed. 
Rush has a chance here as well. Robin could get caught out. He's a little bit exposed at the moment. He's essentially being held by three different angles inside of the elevators. Everyone from Hellraisers knows where he is at the moment, and he may not have too much to say here. Exodus picks up his second kill of the round. This is shaping up like it could potentially be a flawless, but no, Purple swings on through, picks one before being traded, an impactless kill to finish things off. For all intents and purposes there, Hellraisers flawless round. Yeah, uh, and again, another round where Hellraisers not under any pressure with how they were holding things. I just don't know what to say. It looks if like Helios, they're going in blind into a lot of these gunfights. We're seeing the refrags have been phenomenal from Hellraisers. It's it's not even a question how quick they were able to get those kills back. Somebody dies in the next five seconds, all you will see Hellraisers get one back in the kill feed. Very, very strong. And trades, Ollie, we've seen it before where teams, if you your trades aren't there, you're going to lose by quite a deficit. You know, we, we've seen games where it could be a 7-1, but those 7-1 rounds... It was very, very close. Yeah. Right now, this is a set, like, it's looking to be potentially a 7 1 with how things are going. And, and then, it's, it's yeah. a clean one as well. If, if this keeps rolling, mm -hmm. it could be a very short night for Helios indeed. Hellraiser's putting up a heck of a fight here, and they're adapting really well. Mm. And I think that this is exactly how you prep against a team like Helios. You've just got to prep your own game and be ready to adapt on the fly yeah. to whatever rubbish they're going to start throwing at you. Because it's going to happen. They're going to start pulling some weird stuff. I imagine when we get on the, onto the side switch, we probably see Helios going through a couple of cheeky spawn peaks, maybe. A little bit of roaming, a little bit about getting out there and just trying to find a couple of cheap kills. Yeah. Hellraiser needs to be ready for all sorts of things. They need to be ready for those kind of tricks because I do believe that it is going to, uh, it is going to come through. Now, previously, when we saw this site, we did see Helios go for a vault drop. Yep. We saw them open up the hatch and we just saw two or three guys jump down and it just came to nothing. Mm -hmm. It was a mission, right place, right time. Yeah. He had the heads up play. It wasn't that difficult. They telegraphed it, they announced it, they sent the tweet, they'd done absolutely everything to say, we are going to be dropping this hatch right here, right now. I don't think that that's going to happen again. But my worry demo is that when we've seen Helios take a step back, when we've seen them slow it down, they've still not had that bite. They've still not had that really convincing push. Now they're attacking into the base, but there's no opportunity for vertical play aside from the hatches. Yeah. They've struggled with the vertical play. Now they've not really got that. They've just got hatches to work with. It could slow them down even further here. Yeah, didn't really get to dig into this site all too often with how the setup is from Hellraisers. Essentially what Hellraiser has done is set up an open area, which forces Helios to attack into open area. And the reason being, you know, people might look at this and think, oh, why don't you just try and take from server and be, you know, very minimalistic. You cannot plant if the defenders still have control of the hatch because there's a blind spot that you can find, uh, which would be kind of sanctioned off to all of the defenders, you know, sitting inside of red, sitting in towards garage, but it is not hidden from the hatch. And if a defender is on the hatch, you cannot plant in that room. So that is the main issue that Helios have to take in consideration is they just have to fight. They have to try and fight against Hellraisers. Opening pick here, going to Hellraisers yet again. Purple is going to fall. Not necessarily had the impact that you want out of your Ash entry at this point. Slow but a certain drop down into site. Exodus, he's got the information. He's going to pop up Brilliant. from behind the desk. Oh. Great couple of kills here wow. from wow. Exodus. Picks the third as well. Can he make it for? No, eventually does get down. But the writing is on the wall for this round. One lesion inside of open area demo. What a shift. What a performance. And there you go, smash with the other one. Exodus in that scenario, playing off information, but probably not the information we were expecting. He played off the sound of the goo mines. The goo mines. Like, come on, that that that's that's phenomenal from him. And being able to find just kill after kill after kill in such quick succession. And I think that just highlights that Helios, they cannot refrag to save themselves. They just can't. Like, how do you let that player get away from it? He is static in that position. He didn't move. He didn't move. All he done was crouch and stand up. Didn't move side to side. That was it. And three of them fell to him. It's the C key. The power of the C key. The power of that crouch. There's a little bit more to it. The goo mine was great. He knew the placement. He predicted where the player had moved to brilliantly. He was ready for the player that pushes in from the opposite side through staff as well. Vertical pressure demo. He could have been rooted out of there. Get yourself in upstairs. Get yourself playing inside a stop. Figure out how to do it. We've got a great action replay of it here. We just come in just after the goo mine pinged. But Exodus, brilliant couple of kills here. Picks one, picks the second, ready and waiting on the third. Bish, bash, bosh, easy stuff. I'm not sure how that last player 
on the side of Helios didn't finish him off because he was stood up and exposed for a little minute. Potentially some missed shots, but uh, we wouldn't like to. Call. Luckily, we didn't. For well, for his sake, we didn't get to see them. But uh, who knows? Who knows what happened? And well, Hellraisers 5-0, five zero, -oh. five five zero, -oh. and it doesn't even feel close. We've been going. I feel like we've been going for about five minutes. We've been. Let me see the time. What's how long have we been talking for? Ah, about 20 minutes. Speed running this best of three so far, at least map one of it. There's a lot of time for that to change. We're anticipating Bank to be very defender sided. Although with the changes, there is potential for that to change, especially given how open the field is here in terms of bands, given we've only really got two. So that's not something that is a guarantee. Helios, they're going to go for their trademark rush and push. Doku Call is ringing out, but there's information available this time. Robin, not able to try and push on through. Can't go up against that Alder, and he's now concerned about players on a bit of a rotation. Hellraiser's still not looking to aggress onto this, though. They're happy to take that back seat. They're getting caught out on the Inox tracker, but that really isn't something that's concerning them at the moment. The shock drone goes in. That's probably going to clear out a little bit of utility, maybe disable the Maestro camera or not. Nay, going to pick up their first kill of this round. The mission immediately there with the trade. Second logic bomb comes in. We're now starting to see this utility slowly but surely used, but it's not always doing that much. Bit of an unlucky time in there from Brian on the vertical. Hellraiser still with an opportunity to drop and make that rotation if required, but they're doing a great job of holding on here. I mean, Purple is in the site right now, but it doesn't really have anything to play off except Exodus giving himself up. But then again, that is vital information. For Hellraisers, they know that they're in the bomb site, but they are not giving them a chance to plant right now. Brian will start to go for the defuse. And will he be able to stick it? Will anyone from Hellraisers be able to stop him? Nitro will hold on, and it looks as if Helios might be on for the first round. A 1v3. This has been their best chance and a mission. He is the new player to Hellraisers. Can he come up with a big clutch? Looks like he's got a little bit of information to work with. The smoke was fairly kind to him there. He's going to dodge out from the first stun, pick up his second kill on the round. He's got live ping information. There was a camera inside of sight. He's going to pick up his third, fourth and final kill required. 20 seconds. He has time to make this happen. Purple sitting back inside a square, watching onto the plant. Doesn't really want to give himself away. A mission. He's going to have to try and make this happen. The profile oh no. comes in from Purple, but he's missed. A mission's going to stick this. Purple, oh no. you've got to try and hit the show. No. He's not going to do it, Demo. What have we just seen? What is... What's going on? What is... How have you let him get away with that? He has just robbed you around right in front of you. My, my, my. What a game we have on our hands. Match point already for Hellraisers. Someone better call Ian because this could be quick. He might be in the back with his feet up. You never know. Hellraisers are sitting with their feet up. 6-0. Just wow. Just, yeah. Big confidence boost. See, what a great clutch from a mission as well. Just. That's an experience showing through. Information again. I Information think has been through. key. Vital again for Hellraisers and Helios. You know, we're seeing them bring the Sophia. We're seeing them bring, uh, obviously, the Ash a lot. Why is that utility being left up? The Maestro camera that assisted a mission in getting basically that round win. Killing the Nomad inside the Tellers. The Nomad was playing right in front of the Maestro camera and it wasn't hit. Just hit it. Just take one, like a split second just to hit it and, and block it out so it can't be used. You don't need to destroy it. You just need to smash the glass. Please, that one thing alone could have been the difference between that round going to Hellraisers or Helios. But here we sit. Here we sit. A match point for Hellraisers to put them ahead inside of this best of three. We do have two maps remaining inside of this series if required. Villa and Oregon. Although, if it continues to go this way, it's looking relatively unlikely that we'll see Oregon. And keep in mind, Villa is Hellraiser's pick. This is the map that we expect them to, quote unquote, dominate on. But maybe Bank was the map that they're supposed to dominate on. It's definitely being proven. You can see straight away the change-ups that, that we're seeing from Hellraiser's. 
they're bringing that Zero with the Hard Breach gadgets almost in, in form of the Habana. You know, Habana yeah. is solely brought for bank because it's great for opening the hatches for the basements. True, yep. That is literally what the Zero can do. But then you're still bringing the Maverick, you're still bringing the Fermite for the server wall. You still have other options. Keep in mind, if you're against Helios, you said that they might be able to get away with some things that maybe they shouldn't, such as spawn peaks, some runouts, you know, something cheesy. You still have that security, but it doesn't look as if their their tricks are going to work against them. Axis has got the opening kill. He's found two for himself. Down goes Robin also. And Helios, they've went for this aggressive roam game. A lot of them are roaming. Only not a single person is really in the site right now. That opening kill has been critical as well. And quite often when we see someone from Hellraiser's pick one, they'll get two as well. I'm not sure if that's more to say about the positioning from Helios or if it's more to say about the positioning from Hellraiser's. They've got to be there for you to be able to get the kill, but still, it's very, very impressive indeed. Now, we are going to find ourselves level. Nitro's going to grab one back. Just approaching the halfway point of the round, still looking to gather this vertical control. There's not that much to make any more with at this point, seeing as a mission has been taken on out. Still, a bit of utility available. Two nades on the side of Exodus. Exothermics for flares and of course the blowtorch and the nades on the Maverick. Still plenty of tools here to get the job done. Four drones as well. So opportunity to now start to gather this information. Just take a little bit of the pace out of the round. Exodus, I'm sure he just saw the foot there. He's going to look to try and pre-fire on through. Nitro needs to try and get himself out of dodge, but Purple's still inside of the elevator. He could come up with a rook of kills here. Excuse the pun, but no, he's going to get taken out. What a what a turn. What a challenge demo. I just I don't know how they're losing these engagements. Hellraisers winning their fights, landing their shots, and now they still have about a minute, Ollie, which is still more than enough time to figure out what they want to do. The only real thing that uh, I would say that is a bit of a shame for Hellraiser is that they're not going to be able to get really the, the best utility out of the Zero. I'm sure the Zero camps would have been used around this stage to gather information and see, you know, positions and sites, see how many, how many people are playing, you know, in towards Red, which is kind of the key highway for a lot of defenders for this basement. I think we're kind of looking at Exus again, only to, to really be that spearhead for Hellraisers. I mean, what a game he's had. 11 kills and three deaths so far, and he can definitely get a host more. Well, the smoke's come in now. Nitro are going to kick things off with a kill onto Exodus. Rush, he's looking to try and pre fire on through, but he's going to miss his shots. He's lined up the second, but no, misses the one tap, eventually finds the kill. Nitro's going to be down. It's all down to Nay. The C4 comes out as a desperate attempt, but the plant is going down. Pre fire through the wall for the second time. Not again. The plant will be successful just in the nick of time. Pistols being drawn, but flares to finish things off. Hellraisers, what an opening map we have just seen. That's how you make a statement. That is how you come out of the doors absolutely bouncing to get your season underway. I mean, just wow. Wow. That, that's all you can say. Just wow. It's a serious display of skill from Hellraiser's Exodus there. What a pop-off game he was able to have. So many occasions where he was getting a couple of kills. The big clutch from a mission. There's probably quite a bit there to go and dissect. I wasn't anticipating to be at this point just yet, a 7-0, I'll be honest. I thought we were going to see a little bit more of a game there, especially with the map as it was. But it certainly hasn't disappointed on the excitement factor. Yeah, I just think, in general, Hellraisers, this is where you can just sit back and just play your siege because you know it's worked. You know, that was the big fear. Yeah. Are Helios going to be able to get away with the same stuff? Nope. 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 No, they are not. I think the big question here, Demo, is are we going to see a ban for Villa? We've got to start seeing something soon because you don't want to be dropping down into that lower bracket so early on. I don't know if the way they've been playing, I think they need to. Well, I mean, we know they need to make a change, yeah. but, Someone needs to but make will a change. they? Will they? Well, that's going to be the big question. Stick around. We are going to be back with map number two very, very shortly.